Crowley. All right. This is a nice one I picked up. Uh, I don't know if it's still around. That's a 1909 Shire uh, Heritage Lager. So a lot of lager family comes mostly from um, Pilsner. <clears throat> but then techniques changed it and they were allowed to get it a little bit more earlier, faster. In the beginning, a lot of people didn't like it. Um, there were people that weren't beer drinkers. They enjoyed it a lot. And as it gained popularity, it started taking over. So once ones that have more flavor, you want to work towards actual Pilsners, like really uh, probably German ones, uh, mainly the, the, the ones that are just they have it all. They usually age longer, even the more affordable ones. They've just been doing it so long, they, they're able to do that. So a lot of times people don't realize <clears throat> that they want more flavor. And for those that are just happy, that's good. You're happy. You're happy. Something different pops up. I'm just going to let you know where it's at. So for those that are looking for a little more, this might be it. For those that you can probably expand a little bit out of it, that's that's cool. Once you get out of your comfort zone, you really find out there's just a lot more going on, period. No matter what, there's just a variety per each recipe. It just takes it to levels you never knew had existed because we just have this very basic perception of it. Ooh. Clearly this one, more of an older style recipe. Beautiful color, definitely darker golden. Almost bronze. Bronze has a little more hue to it. It's still light and refreshing. It's definitely hearty, malty. The yeast bring a little more funk to it, but it's very clean. So. Yeah, that's beautiful. It's a little sweeter, but it still has that funk. As Pilsner should have, but it's definitely lager. It's a little more smooth, a little more just relaxed. So for me, it's like right in the middle. It's the perfect spot. It's all in the same family. It's just it's gonna have more maltiness, a little more sweetness, a little more funk, but it's still almost almost not quite crispy. Just to get into that little area where it's starting to get right there, um, which it is, but it's just it's not sharp. Basically, is the best way to describe it. You're gonna have something that's super crisp, and you just need to know the difference. That way, you're like, oh, is that for me? Is that what I want? Is that what I desire? There's something a little more round. This just has a little more roundness to it. Very beautiful. Uh, I'm not always big on some of their flavored stuff, but when it comes to just good, simple, clean, light, vibrant recipes, they're just, they got it down. Cause they brought that, whatever was first coming to America, the beers were definitely taking over as lighter beers. So all the German style was really bringing in more, more spunky, malty, heavy, um, more body in the beers. That's all Dos Equis is, is a Mexican beer. German guy got a hold of it and he's like, I'm gonna do something more to it. I need a little more. And he brought a slightly heavier um, Mexican style beer and that's what took over for that one. So yeah, it's still good for being outside, enjoying the sun, hanging around with people. It's gonna be around like 5%, nothing crazy. This is made 4.5, so it actually has a lot of body, a lot of flavor, very mild alcohol. So you can hang out and do stuff and feel great and have a great time. So if you just want something a little more, this is a, if you haven't had a Pilsner, I believe this is a very good step because I was in Germany went straight to Pilsners and man, man, it just, <laughs> all this crazy, just things I didn't even know was going on is like, where did all this come from? Is that the yeast? And then a lot of it is that most of it's a yeast itself and then uh, the hop itself brings that balance in uh, the bitterness and a little floral sometimes a little fruit and the malt itself can extend the sweetness but it brings that caramel uh, malty all the way to toasty and then you know depending on the beer it gets like chocolate but off the bat it's going to be the, the beautiful cereal uh, flavor you get with all the grains just collect on your mouth even like beautiful tannic sensation of just like after eating a big bowl of cereal it's amazing. It's worth it. So there you go. It's to Shiner, 1909. Check it out. This falls under lager, uh, Pilsner. It's very similar. Just one goes in one direction, one goes in the other, but they're both uh, bottom fermenting yeast. And, uh, one ages longer, usually in barrels. The other one is usually like steel. And that's where the main, and then it's the style of yeast. You have your traditional European yeast. I'm pretty sure there's modern lager yeast. They're just a lot quicker, faster. And that's it, I, the basics, there's more. Trust me, if someone's like, oh, nah, nah, that's okay. This is not for 
everyone and just start breaking everything down is for people who are just kind of not knowing, wondering, and here's answer your question and you make a decision. If you just are good, you know, you don't haven't had that yet. What am what am I looking forward to? It's a lager, has a little more pilsner, more multi-body, definitely a little funk, beautiful, not just like a, a, a simple American lager, it's definitely got a little more going on. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's not it doesn't taste like a Mexican lager, it's definitely in its own little area. Mexican lagers are more multi-sweet. Uh, and balance, like, like closer to golden ale. Nah, yeah, right around, but it's just very, golden ales are an ale, but they're balanced. This is a lager that's balanced, so um, it can be more hoppy, but this one's not. It can have more bitterness, this one does not. This, for someone who's not used to it, you might catch a little extra bitterness, but it's because you're not used to all those other flavors, it's all just going crazy. And so the first ones that hit you are the ones you're familiar with, so. Once you get used to that, you'll see, oh, there's more going on. So for me, I'm not a big fan of Pilsners. I understand the process. I respect it. But if there's too much going on, it's like licking a brick. You just can't do it. This is not. This is wonderful, golden, malty, delicious, bitter, funky, just enough hops to bring that around so I can enjoy another sip. So there you go. Prost to that. Enjoy. Make a choice. If not, we'll be on the next one.